Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Sandra. <laughs> Welcome to Northport Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are always welcome here. If you have not already done so, please take the Red Fellowship book, sign it, pass it, date it, greet your neighbor, and today is January the 5th. Please check the church calendar in your bulletin for all meetings, activities, and announcements. Reminder, there will be a short mission committee meeting today following the worship service. Any of you who have an interest in missions are encouraged to attend. The women's breakfast group will meet this Wednesday at Old World Restaurant. Note the time is 8 a.m. this month instead of 8.30. A celebration of life service for Louise Hall will be held this Saturday at 2 p.m. Deadline to sign up for the Franklin Graham trip in Fort Myers is today. The sign-up sheet is in Fellowship Hall. All who are interested in membership are asked to see the yellow insert in today's bulletin fill out the bottom and place it in the offering plate. Please be sure to read the announcement in today's bulletin about the Faith Builder trip to see the Shepherd King performance in Avon Park. The sign-up sheet is in Fellowship Hall. Obviously, all the sign-up sheets to do and go are in Fellowship Hall. <laughs> Just go look and see what you want to do with all of us. Next week is our collection Sunday for non-perishable food items for those in need within our community. The January newsletters are available for you to pick up in the Narthex. As for announcements, I've been asked to tell you the singles dinner sign-up sheet is also in, the Nar in Fellowship Hall, and we would like for people to sign up so the, res the reservations can be made, and it's this Thursday at 5.30. Uh, Mina. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This coming Thursday is Bags for Beds, and we're having a guest speaker this year, or this, this week, Erin Finnegan. She's officer with the police department, and she's the liaison for the homeless. So she'll be giving us a little presentation. And everybody's welcome, whether you crochet or cut, you know how to cut plastic or whatever you want to do. But just come and hear her. Thank you. Ms. Kim. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So I just wanted to remind everybody that, cor that choir starts back up this week, okay, guys? Yeah. But there were several of you out there that said, you know, I'm thinking about joining the choir. Well, <laughs> now's your time. It's Wednesday night. We're here at 7, right here in the, in the um, sanctuary. So we'd love to have you join us if you would like to join us. And um, please know that the door is welcome to anybody and everybody who would love to be up here. Uh, if you would have the inkling to sing, come and join us. Um, we, we do have a bit of a revolving door, and we love that. So if you want to come join us for a while, that's cool. We would love to have you this week, Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Thank you. Reminder, last but not least, if you have a cell phone, we ask you turn it off, preferably, or at least put it on silent, and I ask that you double check that you did so. Let us be in worship.
Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we here at the Northport Community United Church of Christ wish you a blessed New Year 2020. Hard to believe, but we are here uh, celebrating our first Sunday in this new year. In Isaiah 60, verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Let us stand this morning as we begin our worship by singing together hymn number 107, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Um, that's in your hymnals, 107, or follow along on the screen. Okay, I'm going to ask the children to come forward for our children's message. Right over here. All right, so good morning, everyone. What was your most favorite Christmas gift that you received this year? Um, Lego Creators. Lego Creators. There's such a thing as Lego Land. Have you ever been there? No. It's high time you do. <laughs> How about you? I got a phone. What is it? I got a phone. You got a phone, okay. All right, so... Um, it's pretty high tech, huh? Okay, great. How about you? Tablet. A tablet. Oh, this is the high tech family. Yeah. All right. Well, um, and you're enjoying your gift so far? Okay. How about you? What was your favorite gift this year? Elsa. <laughs> Elsa. Elsa. And, uh, oh, frozen. I think I'm frozen in time. <laughs> well, anyway, what's... Oh, okay. Awesome. Well, I know about frozen, but <laughs> anyway, I want you to look at uh, a gift that our church received, and I'm going to turn it so you can see it better. 
It's the Last Supper, and Corinne Kiefer, she's not here because she has not been feeling well, but I asked her to talk about this when she's feeling better. So next month, from now on, if that's okay with everyone, we're just going to always display that during communion time. Um, it's beautiful, and she'll tell you the story about it. But, you know, we've all received our gifts for Christmas, and one of the things that I do, because I'm so forgetful, is I write myself a list of things that people have given me, gifts, and then I buy thank you cards. And I make a point, I try to not forget anybody, to uh, write them a thank you for the gift that they have given me. Because, you know, gifts take efforts. People go out, they shop for them, they think about what they should buy. Just like Corinne, how she gave us this really very unique and um, really very special gift to the church. So I'm going to make sure that I'm going to write uh, a thank you to her about it. And so I just am reminded of Scripture. In Scripture it says, be thankful. Be thankful. And it keeps saying that. Do not forget the good things that have come your way. So, um, what was it again, Lego? Lego creators. Lego creators, a new phone, a tablet, Elsa from Frozen, <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, um, but she'll tell us, I'm sure, she'll tell us, she'll fill us in. So all these gifts that we get, we say thank you. Thank you to God and thank you to the people that have given us those gifts. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for uh, sending Jesus, um, that there is Christmas, that there is a new year, and we just thank you that you are helping and leading and blessing us, and we are thankful in our hearts for all the good things that come to us from you, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you for being such good listeners.
Well, choir, I believed every word you sang this morning. Uh, you were reflecting it. You can't sing a song like this, oh, Jesus Christ has come. No, you have to really give your heart, and you did it. Let's give him a hand. That was great. And did you notice that the writer of the song kept repeating it uh, at the end? He said, has come, has come. That's like an assurance, almost like underlining it. In the Hebrew, they do that all the time. It says, when somebody was really happy, they said, he was joyfully happy. That's happy twice. Or he had lots of peace and more peace. That's peace twice. And uh, that repeating helps us to really realize how important the message is that God has for us. Before I start anything else, before we welcome our visitors, I have a word for you this morning. So often, I hear people come to me and say, Pastor, what should I do? Have you ever asked that? You go to a person and you kind of hope, like, if I'm going to talk to Patty this morning and tell her what my problem is, she'll tell me what to do. Well, that's a big responsibility, isn't it? She couldn't do that. I can't do that. But I have a scripture for you from 1 Samuel 16.3. God says to the prophet, I will show you what to do. So if there's anybody here in a season of life where you don't know what to do, just ask God, show me what to do. And our Heavenly Father is so willing to help and to give to you what's needed. All right, so we would like to welcome our first-time visitors. Is there anybody here visiting for the first time? We promise we just want to say hi. Okay, right there. Good morning. Welcome to our church. Uh, where are you from? Uh, Indianapolis, Indiana area. Okay, welcome. And you're visiting or you moved here? Visiting. Visiting, okay. Mm -hmm. For just the month of January. Oh, wonderful to have you. Thank Who you. else is here from Indiana? Oh, look, there's all kinds of people from Indiana. Matter of fact, there's a couple that just came back, so, and they're from the Indianapolis area. Welcome. Wonderful. Anybody else? Right back there. Welcome to our church. May I ask where you're from? Uh, Montgomery Center, Vermont. Vermont. Who's here from Vermont? Right there, over there, raise, raise high. So uh, uh, we have a wonderful coffee hour and fellowship. Join us for that and meet the people from Vermont. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Okay, well, if not, then let's welcome, uh, let's give them a hand. If this is your first time visiting, then uh, you'll know now in a minute that we have a tradition in our congregation where we celebrate people's birthdays and anniversaries. And I'm going to start out with the choir. Anybody celebrating a birthday or an anniversary? Yes. Uh, today is 40 years, and we celebrated by, we had a party, unexpected, our friends gave us last night, and we're going to um, a play, and then we're going to dinner today. Yeah. Oh, and your husband? Oh, Michael's right there. That handsome man who has been so good to me all these years. Happy 40th anniversary for you. That's wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> Same people, yes. Um, any uh, birthdays? No birthdays? How about on this side? Birthdays or anniversaries? No. And on this side? Yes. Uh, my granddaughter, Shana, her birthday was uh, New Year's Day. New Year's Day. Fr from Wisconsin. From Wisconsin. And her name is Shana? Shana. Shana. So everybody turn around, let's look at the camera, and wave at Shana, who is celebrating her birthday in Wisconsin. Happy birthday, Shana. <laughs> All right, very good. Um, anybody else? Yes. Yes, we're uh, Henry and Lucy Carey, and our 26th anniversary, uh, 
will be within a day or so. Within a day or so, 26 years. Henry and Lucy, yes. happy anniversary to you. God bless you. And this is not our first time here. It is a return for us. And uh, we're very happy to be back in a, in a church that's very welcoming. Well, we are Thank so you. glad that you are here, and we wish you God's blessings in the years to come. You're from Thank Maine. you. You're from Maine. Okay, oh, anybody yes. you're from Maine? <laughs> no, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Next to you, there is a couple from Maine. Okay, wonderful. Happy anniversary to you. Yes. Would you mind passing it? Morning. Our granddaughter, <clears throat> our beautiful granddaughter, was 18 on January 2nd. So. She was 18? 18. Okay. Well, um, this is a crown for her. And what is her name? Jail. 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 Okay, so, and she lives where? Ottawa. In Ottawa. So let's turn around and say happy birthday, Jaya, in Ottawa. Happy birthday to you. Yes. <coughs> Thank you. So if we did all the celebrations, then let's sing happy birthday and happy anniversary. So uh, we do prayer every uh, Sunday morning. We take time to pray for the different uh, needs in our congregation, and there are many, many different kinds, many uh, people that need uh, healing, comfort. Uh, um, the needs are many. So what are we praying for this morning? Prayer requests. Praying for all those who are sick with colds. We have Mary Jane Schaeferly and Corinne Pfeiffer who is recovering, but boy, everybody's got colds. I'm praying for healing. Right, uh, people with pneumonia and all kinds of things, yep. <laughs> Thank you. Prayers for Ted Weaver who had a stroke on Thursday and is now out of uh, Englewood Hospital and in, at Encompass a Rehabilitation in Sarasota. Hopefully he will recover enough to be home in a couple of weeks. And prayers for his good friend Ruth Swift, who would be celebrating her birthday this week and would have put money in the pot. So hopefully she'll be back very soon. So we pray for Ted, and we pray for all those that um, are having colds and pneumonia and all those things. Heavenly Father, we bring these requests before you, and we know that you are completely in control. And we thank you that you are the healer today. Um, I am reminded of that man who came to Jesus and said, Lord, if you want to, you can heal me. And Jesus just shortly and simply replied, and he said, I want to be healed. And that's what we claim for each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. We should pray for Dave Durandi, that he's in the hospital, and sometimes he doesn't know what the nurses are, what they're testing for, because of him being so diabetic. So we need to pray for Dave Durandi. Well, Lord, we uplift to you, Dave, at this moment, and you created him. You know about all his uh, needs, and we pray that you please meet them according to your plans. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody else on this side before we go over to this side? Yes, I'd like prayers for my husband, Tom. He has a wound on his leg that is, um, was badly infected. It seems like it's getting better in that respect, but he has to go to wound care three times a week, and this is going to be for probably a couple months. 
has to keep his leg elevated. That's why he's not here. Let's pray for Tom. Lord God, we um, uh, pray for him and that wound on his leg, that you would place your healing into his physical body, that it would be restored and even quicker than the doctors are anticipating that. Bless him right now, Lord. We're so used to him being here, but because he's not here right now, I pray that right now in his separate place where he is, that you would minister to him the word, which is powerful and effective. In Jesus' name we pray for his healing. Amen. Uh, I just felt something uh, God told me to pray for all women that are getting hard time to conceive. May God grant them that uh, a foot of, uh, of the womb. You're saying that women who would like to conceive, to pray for them. Oh, okay. Well, of course, of course. Heavenly Father, you just heard this prayer request, and I pray that you would grant um, this couple's wish that they would have their own child. And I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. World peace and comfort for the homeless. World peace and comfort for the homeless. Well, Lord God, uh, there are many ministries right here in Northport that are helping homeless families. Today was a colder day at the beginning, um, and we can't imagine having to sleep out uh, in the woods or, um, or just not have a bed or a home. We pray for those ministries that are helping homeless families, that you give them the resources and... Um, and all what's needed to make an impact. And as far as peace, Lord, you're the Prince of Peace, so we turn to you. We pray for our government, for our local government, for this world, where there's wars that they would cease and that your peace would reign, first and foremost within us, and then as we go out and are your messengers in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Could we please play pay, prayer for um, all the people in the fire and the animals in the fire? Um, just had a senior moment. In Australia. In Australia. Yes, it's devastating. Lord God, you know about these natural catastrophes that happen uh, around the world, and you know about these fires in Australia. Lois has a son who lives in Australia. We pray for all of them, Lord, that you keep them safe and that you help those that are uh, trying to stop the fire, that they would be effective. Everyone in the planning and in the carrying out of all the plans to stop the fire, that it would succeed and that people would be safe or be taken to safety in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. I'd like to pray for Doris Santella. She's in extreme pain right now, has trouble walking with two uh, canes. Uh, they gave her codeine, and that, that's wearing off, and she's getting an MRI on Tuesday. Okay, let's pray for her. Lord God, uh, we so appreciate Doris and um, and uh, I think of her many years in ministry where she prayed for the sick and where she ministered to those in need uh, as a pastor's wife. I pray, Lord, that right now she would receive comfort and healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. This just came to me. I guess I would like prayer for all the drivers out there right now because there's just so many senseless deaths right now, especially in Northport. Um, just another head-on collision yesterday where a person died. And out here on 41 in front of the trailer parks, just every day it seems like, you know, um, bad accidents, deaths, and um, people texting and not paying attention. So just please put your phone down, pay attention. Thank you. Yeah, Lord, we thank you for the signs where it says, uh, don't text and drive. 
Um, we pray for um, all those that have been affected by these accidents, and we pray that you give your angels charge uh, and minister to them, and we pray that uh, people would drive safely and leave and arrive safely. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. I have a heavy heart with our military. Hopefully they'll be safe over in the east. Uh, it's not a good situation, but it's something we're dealing with. Well, Lord, we pray for our, our military servicemen and women. We are involved with making a difference through Holy Joe's Cafe. We thank you that that ministry has been thriving now for several years where we can help the chaplains. We do pray for peace around the world and do our part, Lord. We pray for the chaplains that minister to the soldiers that they would have the right words and the right impact. And we pray for their families that are waiting for them to return, that you help them. And yes, Tony is right, with a heavy heart, because uh, war is not your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. Just throw your bottle at me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm having two procedures this, this month. One of them is endoscopy, I think is what it's called. And then I'm not... All the teeth on the top are being removed. And um, so I was concerned about it, and I've been praying about it, and I want to share uh, some comfort that Jesus gave me. And uh, sometimes we get doctors. They may be saved. They may not be. But I got this vision of, um, I know we've seen the pictures of Jesus, you know, the most common ones, and um, just walking in the room and putting his hand on my arm. And so no matter what, whether our doctors are saved or not, he is our great healer, our physician. And it says by his stripes we are healed. And so I haven't been afraid since then. And so I want to share that with you because so every Sunday we get so many prayer requests. So you have the great healer with you all the time. And so you don't have to be afraid. So I just want to share that with you too and request prayer too. Thank you. Uh, Cindy, I remember when you were in the rehab facility in Venice, mm -hmm. and I was visiting you, and the nurse was handing out your medication. Yes. And remember how she said, before I give you the medicine, I pray over the medicine that it would bring healing to yeah. you. Yeah. So what a comfort that was. Yes, was. Well, Lord God, we thank you that uh, Cindy has faith, and I pray and thank you that she has no fear. And I thank you that you are placing your hand upon her and that all these procedures will go well in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right, how many of you have an unspoken request this morning? Unspoken means you can't say it in front of everyone, but God knows. Lord, you see those hands that have gone up, and we thank you that you will take good care of every need that's present, even the ones that have not raised their hands. Because sometimes that can become mechanical. But you know what's in our hearts this morning and what we have brought with us. And you know us, you see us, and you love us anyway. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're bringing our tithes and offerings, and then we will pray over those. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lord, we look back at this past year, 2019, and you have taken care of all of our needs, and we look ahead into 2020, and we know that you will continue to do so. Thank you, thank you, thank you, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's not be seated, but greet somebody and wish them a happy new year. <laughs> happy new year. You're welcome. All right, so that was fun. <laughs> we're looking at uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 60, and we're reading verses 1 through 5, and you can follow along on the screen. I'm reading from the English Standard Version this morning, at least for the outgoing text or incoming text. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold... Darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together, and they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and exalt, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. So far God's eternal word, let's turn to him in prayer. Lord, you see every heart, uh, we are here before you at the beginning of this new year, and um, we uh, are your, your people, your children, the family of God, uh, you are our Lord, you are our Savior, you are the cornerstone of this church, and you hold the whole world in, its hand, in your hands, and that means us. We thank you that you are the Good Shepherd, and we pray that at this moment you would just silence our hearts from the events of this past week, whether good or bad, and uh, we pray that you speak to your people. We are here to hear, to listen, to accept, and to apply and to understand. In Jesus' name, amen. So tomorrow is uh, epiphany, and the word epiphany means revealing or revelation. I'm going to just talk a little bit about the uh, history, the Christian history about, uh, about that. And this is a Christian holiday that is considered amongst cri uh, Christ uh, Christians um, considering the time when the Magi came to worship the Christ child. And this text that I read to you from Isaiah chapter 60 is uh, the coming of the Magi or the, the three kings or the wise men uh, from eastern lands, like the gospel writer writes, is the fulfillment of this prophecy in Isaiah 60. So we know that Jesus was born a Jew into the uh, nation of the Hebrew people, but from the scriptures, we also know that he came for all people, and that's part of the Christmas story. Let me read that to you. In uh, Luke chapter 2, verse um, 10, it says that, but the angel said to them, to the shepherds, listen, do not fear, 
for I bring you good news of great joy, which will be to all people. And when God says all, it means all. <laughs> no exceptions made. Everyone, everyone. Uh, we say in our church that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, Sandra starts out her announcements with that every single Sunday without a miss. You open up your bulletin, it stands right there as the philosophy of ministry. And only God can help us to accomplish that. God says yes to us, and we respond with our little yes to his big yes. God already said yes to you. You know, so many people in this world run around with this heavy feeling of people having said no to them. Whether it was when they were raised and uh, they did not get affirmation enough from the people around them, we all need affirmation. We all need to know in certain times and seasons of our lives that God is for us and that he has not forgotten or abandoned us. That's a promise of the scripture. The scripture says, I will come to you and I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you abandoned or forgotten. And, you know, we had uh, some serious prayer requests this morning, but, you know, looking with faith to Jesus, who is our healer, by his stripes we are healed. What in the world does that mean? We quote it so often, but it's quoting scripture out of the Old Testament. Jesus suffered. He had sickness and he carried diseases. Even our own sadness. He carried all of that. And so therefore, by us looking to him, we can have a big revelation of God saying yes to us. You look at Jesus and you see God's yes to this world. Epiphany was established before the third century, before Christmas was ever celebrated. The birth of Christ, the coming of the shepherds, the adoration of the three wise men, and the Lord's baptism were all connected to January 6th, to this church festival. Eventually, in the Western Christendom, um, the focus was on the Magi coming to worship the newborn king. In the Eastern Orthodox churches, it's not that. The focus is on Jesus' baptism. And you will go, uh, maybe in some of the, um, uh, like Ukrainian Orthodox or uh, Russian, Serbian Orthodox churches, and you will see predominantly this part of John the Baptist and uh, uh, baptizing Jesus. So it has a whole lot of focus, not just the three wise men having this epiphany, the appearing, the revelation. What was their revelation? Their revelation was that they saw a star, but that they had an open heart to know that this star was proclaiming that the new king was born. It was revealed to them, and they were from the Gentile world. They were not from Israel. They were not from the chosen people. They came somewhere from an eastern far land. And they traveled immense distance to see this king. There was a lot of uncertainty. And I know that there's a lot of uncertainty in our lives. Maybe uncertainty in yours, uncertainty in mine. We don't know all of each other's business. And that's okay. But God knows your business. God knows what your life is all about. God knows all your sadnesses and he knows all your joys. And he knows how to bring it together in a pattern that it will all work out for the good of those who are chosen according to his purpose and those who love him. He is working it out, all of it. And you might say, well, Lord, I'm impatient. I want to know how are you going to do it? How is this all going to work out? How do you bring this all together in a pattern? And do you know we have a missions committee meeting today, or people that are not, let's not call it committee. It sounds so dry, doesn't it? Mission is about life. It's about helping people. I love that prayer request. Uh, help for the homeless. You know, that people are driving by our church and they say, well, this is a church that does something for the homeless people of Northport. There's so much to be done. We have to roll up our sleeves and ask God, what do you want us to do and how do you want us to do it effectively? You remember our series on the Salvation Army? 
for Reformation Sunday? I was just at an event uh, a few weeks ago, a few days ago actually, and the Salvation Army received the Charity of the Year Award for this past year. That's no accident. God honored them in front of, a, of an organization that has nothing to do with the church. But the, the people, the businesses of Northport acknowledged the Salvation Army and said, you've done an outstanding job by helping people in need. And I know about you, but I would like to invest my resources where it's actually being used right. You know, you don't want to give to a mission where you find out that 85% of it goes to administrative costs. A good measure to find out if the mission is really effective is that maximum 15% should go towards that. Only 15% towards administration and the rest needs to go to the actual work. And so these, these missionaries from Eastern land that didn't know that they were going to be missionaries to the Gentile world have a revelation about Jesus and then they go back to the far off land where they were from and so mission started. That's so cool that we're having a mission meeting today because this is the beginning of mission to the world. The three wise men go back and they carry back the news that they had heard about Jesus. On December 25th, we established the Feast of the Nativity and starting with the day after Christmas till Epiphany are the 12 days of Christmas. So you count 12 days of Christmas with the day after Christmas. And what did the Magi say? The Magi said, we have come, we have seen the star, and we have come to obey, uh, to worship the king. And then eventually out of that grows obedience to the king. Now when we have the word king, it transports us Americans into an unfamiliar world. Why? Because U.S. citizens vote for or against a candidate for office, and if this official performs poorly, he or she can be voted out of office. Monarchy works differently. Monarchs aren't elected. It's a different reality from democracy. Kings have their right to be a king or a queen simply because of hereditary right. They have inherited that right to sit on that throne. And so they are monarchs for life. The king or queen is a sovereign. He or she has the authority and the power to carry out decisions. At least it used to be that way. And their will had to be obeyed. And when monarchs ruled nations, they were said to be so by divine right of kings and queens. So God placed them on the throne, and that is where they were supposed to be. And that is why so often a monarch was also the head or is the head of the church. You look, you study this in history, and you'll find that out. Now, in the Old Testament, kings were referred to as shepherds. That's a great expression, actually to think that our president would be a shepherd of the people. That a king or queen is a shepherd, shepherding the needs of the people. Micah 5.4, let's look that up. It says, He will stand and shepherd in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Then they will live securely. We all want to live securely. Do you believe Americans want to live securely? Well, of course we do, right? Wasn't that the number one question after 9-11 happened? How can we live securely? And changes were made to achieve that. But the bottom line is there is no 100% security anywhere in this world. We go into places these days and where there are mass gatherings, I sometimes wonder, is this a safe place? Do you wonder that? What would I do if something would happen? Well, I have good news for you. You are under the protection of King Almighty, of God Almighty. Where is your protection coming from? Where is your help coming from? Where is my help coming from? Isn't that what Psalm 121 says? I lift up my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who created heaven and earth. Am I being too fast for you? 
Sometimes I get just all wound up and I can't stop. <laughs> right. I lift up my eyes unto the hills. Not to a mountain, but to the mountain in the Old Testament represented the presence of God. Isn't that where Moses went when he got the Ten Commandments? And he disappeared for 40 days and 40 nights and the people thought, well, you must have died. Let's have a party. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. They partied and it wasn't a good party. Matter of fact, Moses came down and he was so upset, he threw down the two tablets, broke the tablets, and he had to go back up and redo the job. <laughs> or God had to redo the, the imprinting of those words. So the king in the Old Testament was there to serve the people under God's authority, meaning the people were not to be abused for the king's benefit. The king was to bless the people. Now, Israel's experience with kings was, to put it mildly, inconsistent. David was a king after God's own heart, but his son Solomon turned away from God and worshipped idols because of marrying the wrong kind of women. Yes, women, plural. And then he had, I don't know how many lovers on the side. Hundreds of them. So we know where his weakness was. <laughs> well, I'm glad I can make you smile. <laughs> First Sunday of 2020, remember. <laughs> so that was his problem. And he turned away, his heart turned away from God. And then there were others who followed idols. We have heard about King Herod, who is called also Herod the Great. He was a great builder, but he was not a perfect king. As a matter of fact, the very opposite is true. The earthly kings had flaws. But then God says, I will send another king. And that's why the Magi from the east spoke of, we have come to worship this newborn king, a new king, a new era. And there's a beautiful scripture in John 1.49 when later Nathanael was called to follow Jesus. This is what he said. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. That's not something he learned from a book. Loving Jesus doesn't just come to us because we read some books on theology. Theology doesn't bring us greater uh, a revelation from God. It give us, can give us greater education. But revelation from God comes from the Word of God. The more we take it in, the more we understand it, the more we treasure it, the more closer and the more we love Him, the more closer we come to Him or become with Him. He was called the son of David, Jesus, the new king. Israel's prophet wrote about a coming king in the line of David, one who had the right qualities and character to be the royal representation of God on earth. Let's read Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, a Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David. And over his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with justice and with righteousness from now until forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. We were just reading about when Jesus was, uh, this was in the adult Sunday school class this morning, when Jesus was uh, entering on Palm Sunday, uh, Jerusalem, and how the crowd said to him, Hosanna. Do you know what Hosanna translated means? It means, save us. And it has never changed. That prayer has never changed. To this day, that's what our lives need, salvation. Salvation, a God who is strong enough, who can bring that salvation, is introduced to us in Jesus. Peace will be the hallmark of this king's reign. 
and the people he rules will enjoy justice, righteousness, security. Meaning he's a king who can be trusted, who should be honored. And that's King Jesus. Now let us look at what kind of King Jesus is. This King Jesus is the one who defeats his enemies, and when he defeats his enemies, they stay defeated. They don't come back. Jesus defeats the enemies. And what is our greatest enemy? Satan is our greatest enemy. Death is our greatest enemy. Is our last enemy, the scripture says. And then Jesus, after the resurrection, the disciples and the scriptures declare, right? The people around Jesus declare, where, O death, is now your sting, right? Where, O death, is now your victory? It's gone because the grave is empty. You know, over the years of ministry, I've seen so many people on their deathbed. And I do have to tell you that none of them have ever said, I wish I would have made more money. Nobody ever said, I wish I would have gone more to school. Nobody ever said, I wish I would have had less of God. But everybody, everybody said, I need more of God. More in those last moments of our lives. And aren't you glad that we have a God who overcame even death? That death isn't the last word. But you see, with our human eyes, I look at this and say, well, yeah, this is a tray. It's filled with bread, and this is filled with cups that have juice in them. That's physical. I can see it. I can touch it. I can relate to it. But to say to someone who is dying, death is no more, we can only do through the eyes of faith. Think of it. Death, a transition from this life into life eternal. I've never met a person who did not want to hold back their loved one and say, live a little longer. We all want that. It's never the right time to die. We always want to hold on more to the person. We have a celebration of life for Louise, and I wanted to hold her back. Yeah. I wanted her to live so bad I wanted her to have more time. But you see, that's not up for us to decide, is it? God knows our time. God knows the day. God knows the hour. Before a day has ever passed, God has it already in his book of life. Before I've ever lived it. And I can tell you some stories about Louise. But the one thing that I will remember till the day I die is that she even, in her greatest hours of need, always mustered up a smile. It just blew me away. You saw it. And she said thank you. She could barely speak. She couldn't move barely her body. She was so in need. That's what will become of us. The Bible says in Corinthians that our body is like a tent, pitched up for a while, and then it needs to break down. But what's on the inside of us, our soul is eternal. And so, but that I will remember. She smiled every single time I saw her. Every single time. And I thought, how does she? I've never met a person with such strength. I just I never have. Not like that. We are all unique in our way to how God has created us. But from her, I learned this. So who gives us strength? Our king. Why? Because his government will never cease. I mean, look at, look at what's going on in Washington. Do you have questions? His government will never cease. It won't end. And this isn't going to bring, whatever happens in this world is never going to bring an end to his government. 
But what happens in God's kingdom will end other governments. <laughs> so I just want to encourage all of us with this new year, 2020, to hold on to God because he's righteous, he's just, and he has nothing but love for his people. Let's stand and pray together. Heavenly Father, we place ourselves this new year, 2020, into your hands, and we ask you to please guide your people, bless your church, uh, thrive and multiply the church, um, multiply our missions, give us effectiveness, Lord, and more uh, and deeper dedication. We pray for the service for Louise, Lord, that's coming up this Saturday that you would minister to your people, especially to the family in their time of loss. And I pray for anybody else here, Lord, who looks back at 2019 and who has had loss in their life, whatever form of loss it was. I pray that you fill that place of loss with a deep sense of comfort and your presence. And I know you will. We can count on you. You are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and the Prince of Peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, we confess our faith by saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's remain standing, and we're going to sing together hymn number 116, We Three Kings. That's verses 1, 3, and 5.
You may be seated. So some of you might ask the question when it says in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the word Catholic there does not mean denomination. It means simply the universal Christian church. Um, because once we get to heaven, it won't matter if we're Baptist, Lutheran, Reformed, Catholic, whatever, as long as Jesus is the foundation of our lives. That's what's going to matter. And that's what that word means in the Apostles' Creed. So the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after he had supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. And as often as you eat this bread, and as often as you drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he comes again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, you are calling us into fellowship with you and that you are ministering to your people through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it takes dynamos, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, on the inside of us to understand the great mystery of godliness. Uh, we have come here before you at the beginning of this new year and simply ask you to guide and lead your people. Forgive us our sins, we pray, for the sake of what Jesus has done on the cross for all of us. We love you and we worship you. We're going to take a moment of silence and each of us confess our sins to God. Lord, you have heard our cry for help. Uh, you have heard our prayer on the inside. Only you have heard it, Lord. But you care, and you know how to take care of all those things. In Jesus' name, thank you for forgiving us. Amen. All has been prepared. We do not exclude anybody from communion in our congregation. All are welcome to participate. All we ask you is to be right with God and right with your neighbor. And um, the way how we take communion is you will be served first the bread and then the cup. Let's all hold on to the elements and then take it together.
It's indeed the body of Christ broken for you. Mina, the body of Christ broken for you. Christine, the body of Christ broken for you. Don, the body of Christ broken for you. Kim, the body of Christ broken for you. Anne, the body of Christ broken for you. Dolores, yes. the body of Christ broken for you. Patty, the body of Christ broken for you. Donna, the body of Christ broken for you. This represents the body of Christ broken for us.
Yes, indeed, this is the cup of the new covenant. Mina, the cup of the new covenant. Christine, this is the cup of the new covenant. Don, this is the cup of the new covenant. Kim, this represents the cup of the new covenant. Anne, this is the cup of the new covenant. Dolores, yes. this is the cup of the new covenant. Patty, this is the cup of the new covenant. Donna, this is the cup of the new covenant. Church family, this is the cup of the new covenant through the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's close our eyes and turn to him in prayer one more time. Lord, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for helping us, renewing us, redeeming us, and saving us. Bless our church and its ministries and our personal walk with you. In Jesus' name we ask it humbly. Amen. Now, uh, let's receive the benediction. And as I am saying these words, why don't you close your eyes and reflect a little bit on what happened last year, and let's look forward to what God is going to do this coming year. You may be seated. May the coming year be one of increased riches of grace, hearing his voice more clearly, knowing his heart more deeply, resting in his love more fully, trusting his care more completely, walking his pathway more peacefully, knowing his presence more intimately, blessed by his goodness more abundantly. And in all things, may we know the shalom peace of God, encouraging us to move forward, empowering us to boldly take each step, greeting as you turn uh, a new corner, calming your heartbeat as you walk through dark valleys, softening each footstep as you climb rugged mountains, and increasing your courage as you follow your shepherd wherever he leads. You crown the year with bountiful harvest, even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture, and the hillsides blossom with joy. Amen. Let us sing together the Lord's Prayer.